Okay, roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Does roll Scott, call. Scott hey, Donahue. Joe. Here. <laughs> Christian Patz. Here. John Adfelt is on his way. Jack Asher, absent. Ruth Atkins. Here. Brittany Collins. Present. Nora Davis. Here. Joey Kent, absent. Oh, yeah. Diane Martinez, absent. Don Merriam. Here. That's everybody. Okay. Public comment. Items not on the agenda. Step up to the microphone, the podium. So I'm, uh, Emory Unified doesn't have a, a middle school. And uh, pedagogical studies have found that middle schools are really important things to have for children's uh, development and welfare. And we don't have one here, and that's by choice. So uh, my daughter is, as of Monday, uh, not in this district anymore. Right? We took, my wife and I took our daughter out because she is of middle school age starting now. And so there's no middle school available for Emory students, and so out, out we go. Uh, for that reason and for other reasons, there's a lot of mismanagement at Emory Unified, and I'm using, I'm taking this opportunity to remember uh, my, you know, our, I should say, our involvement at Emory Unified. And remembering back when we, when we first enrolled our daughter in kindergarten here, uh, there's a, uh, I found very early on that this district doesn't countenance uh, dissenters. If you're a dissenter, you're a persona non grata. And it revealed itself to me early on when I joined the PTO, Parent Teachers Organization, uh, and I thought that we should support the teachers. Like, for instance, at the time, there was a teacher's resolution, and uh, the, uh, I thought that we should support the teachers in that. And I was told that no, well, the, the, uh, the PTO will not support the teachers. And I got on the lift serve and I started telling fellow parents we should be supporting our teachers. And then I was c censored and not allowed to comment on the lift serve anymore. And I was told that no comments would be allowed uh, that are uh, disparaging of anybody in the administration and that uh, no disparaging comments of the ECCL. So that was my first entree into Emory Unified School District. Uh, that's pretty bad for a school district, you know, because we're supposed to be all about, uh, you know, critical thinking skills and what have you. And also, it's, you know, we're, we've invested, as parents, we've invested our children, which is the most valuable thing we have. And so that's pretty discouraging start off. Uh, other stories, I was told by our former superintendent of the schools that we will not discuss uh, the closing of Annie Yates Elementary School. That's going to happen. And that had been decided more than 10 years hence. Uh, we were told at a public meeting in this room, actually, uh, which is interesting because I asked them, well, well, which meeting was that decided at? Which public meeting and who decided that? And, you know, could you tell me the vote for that? Well, of course, that nobody could tell us the meeting for that, that, that was decided because it never was decided at a public okay. meeting. It was decided yeah. at privately. Your time is up. Okay, thank you very much. Any other public comments? Okay, approval of the June 17th minutes. Move approval. Second. Any opposed? No. Action items, none. Informators, information items, 5.1, Emeryville Center, Community Life Wellness Center. We're gonna have to table that for the next meeting. Okay. 5.2, Emeryville Center, Community Life, update. Mr. Baker. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see everyone again. Uh, we're, uh, it's been a busy last month over at ECCL, and so here's the update for this version of the City Schools meeting. Uh, just orientation-wise, again, um, A is the community center at the corner of 53rd and San Pablo. Building B is the administration building along San Pablo. Building C is the K-8 school. Building D is the high school. 
building E is the, is the gym. So a uh, construction update, all buildings are substantially complete and approved for occupancy by DSA inspectors. That includes A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, at B, the administration building is occupied. The, the school district office is open for business there on Monday. In the K-8 school, we're occupied, and all the teachers are now uh, doing their classroom setups in building C and D. Um, the punch list is complete in building E, so we're at final completion on building E. Um, site work is about 95% complete. Um, concrete, paving, landscape, and we'll show some of those things. Um, punch list work, uh, we went to the city council on Tuesday evening to get authorization to work afternoons, evenings, and Saturdays for punch list work after school starts. The intent there is to do that punch list work outside of school hours. Um, uh, it was modified with some good comments by council members about there are some after school activities there. We won't start at all till 3.30 and we, won't, we obviously won't be doing, and that punch list work includes painting, touching up painting, um, replacing plants, patching concrete, all those sorts of things. So we, we would be doing that outside of school hours. Um, furniture, fixtures, equipment, and move in. Um, we, this is moving from the old space ECL. Santa Fe move was complete back in June. Annie H is complete except for the library, which is in progress. The district office, uh, that move will be complete this week out of here. Uh, those folks are all working over at ECCL, not here right now, which is why there's no one here. The city office will complete next week, be complete next week. Um, all the furniture delivery was completed last week. Building A has some tables and chairs that come uh, by around the 1st of September. Uh, the big push now is for c configuring all the security, audiovisual data, and telecom equipment and, and systems. We've got the district system up and running now. Um, the city system is kind of in progress. Uh, and so getting those systems up and running and, and training uh, staff on how to use them is, is currently underway. As for site safety and security, at the good suggestion of the city of schools group uh, two weeks ago or two months ago, we've had a security guard full time when Turner is not on site. Um, from about 5.30 p.m. until 6.30 a.m. Um, that's gone very well. We've had no incidents over the last two weeks as we've, as we've moved in. So uh, updates, Building A, the community center is complete, except we haven't put the furniture in there yet. You'll see out front that we still have a little bit of concrete work going underway, and then those, those areas there where trees will be planted, those will be planted in the next couple days. Um, this is the inside of the multi-purpose room, so it's all complete. There's just some punch list work. You'll see little carts and things. That's really the contractor, the subs doing punch list work. Uh, this is the cater, the catering kitchen in Building A. Um, I left the site about an hour ago. The health inspector was doing inspections in this and the main kitchen. Um, restrooms have been complete for some time. Building B. So there is Lisa Tamery, the first day of work in her new offices. This was taken on Monday, and this is the break room. And district staff has been moving, and you can see the boxes. Suddeth is our mover there. They're kind of unpacking boxes and getting things all up and running there. That's kind of been gone to going all week long. Um, the furniture is in the offices. This is Marion's office. Um, this, I apologize, is a little bit dark. This is the grand stair in the entryway in, in, in building B, which is my favorite space in, the, in, in there. This is about the top of the stair looking. One of the, one of the, city, one of the art pieces for the city's art program is going to be installed here in October, and that'll be hanging from the ceiling there. Um, one of the art pieces of the one of the three art pieces has been installed. This is in the teen room, and this is a mural. Um, there are three art pieces. There's a sculpture in the main lobby. This is a mural with Native American themes that's in the um, the teen room, and then there's another sculpture that will go outside the library. That will be installed also in the fall. This is the uh, break room on the first floor. This has been th this is used all week long for kind of we had the recess committee in here the other day planning recess activities. We've got our meetings there. You can see the boxes in the back. This is going to be, a, this is one of the city spaces. And as the city kind of completes their move in next week, they'll take this space over. Those are, their, those are some boxes in the background. Second floor, this is the corridor outside the wellness and uh, health center. This is one of the health centers. This is a clean utility room. So all these rooms are ready to go for lifelong to move in. Um, I, lifelong will be moving in, I believe, after the 1st of September. That's the county's health operator. Um, this is Building D High School. This is the Grand Stair. This is the, stu the students will enter and the doors kind of in the lower left-hand corner and come up that Grand Staircase. In the high school, this is the library. So this li the library has been our, our furniture staging area. So this is the circulation desk. You see um, this is, these are the book uh, sensors. There are two sets of them. One goes into the building, one to the exterior door. And these are our good friends from one workplace. As they, and so we kind of been bringing the furniture here and then taking it upstairs. So this has been their staging area. 
Um, the, this is the school district offices, so they also moved in Monday. Um, the, the chairs had not been yet moved in this room when we took this photograph. You can see their boxes. So they've been operating right here, the, the principal and staff's office, since Monday. Um, upstairs, the classrooms. All the teachers are uh, diligently moving into their classrooms right now, or setting their classrooms up. This is, the, this is one of the high school classrooms. You can see the monitors there. That's our large touchscreen monitors. I think there are a total of about 40 of these. Um, one in each classroom, so those are, inst uh, those, are, those are now uh, installed. And you can see the furniture is in here and the, the teachers are unpacking their boxes. Here's one of the lab classrooms. This has all been set up now. They've still got boxes kind of stacked up against the wall, but those are being, those over the next week before down the first day of school will be, be uh, uh, unpacked. So I walked down over there at 4 o'clock today and saw probably about a dozen teachers in both, both schools unpacking their boxes. Um, just want to make sure that everything's, that everything is going fine. We've had a one or two boxes that went to the wrong room, but we're, we're tracking those down. Then at the K-8 school, this is the exterior view from the field. Um, again, these buildings are all complete. This is the, uh, up at the, the top floor, which is the middle school floor. You can see the lockers there. And this is one of the two kind of conversation areas. There are these wood steps at each end of the, of the corridor, which are where the students can kind of hang out and socialize. They're really nice um, uh, casework uh, was done there. Um, this is one of the uh, K three eight uh, the, the seventh the middle school age uh, classrooms with the furniture installed and again the monitor. This teacher was in the process of putting things. You'll see on the right there's some little kind of pieces of blue tape on the wall. That's our punch list. So the architects have gone through over the last couple weeks and, and marked things that need to be fixed. And so that's p being picked up now. We're going to probably pick up about 90 percent of the punch list work between now and the first day of school. Anything remaining, again, we're going to do after hours in the evenings or on Saturdays. Um, this is one of the shared lab. Uh, this is the shared uh, room between the labs. That's a fume hood, and these are the casework and the boxes are from the lab. We had the, uh, uh, the chemical company come and relocate everything on Tuesday. It's very important that those folks are the only ones authorized to take chemicals from where they're stored into the school, up into the labs, and unpack those. So that's now complete. Um, again, this is one of those seating areas at the other end of the corridor for the, for the, the, uh, the, t the third floor, which is grade six, seven, eight restrooms. Now we go down to the next floor, which are grades, depending on the classroom, grades two through five. Um, so uh, this teacher's kind of got, has all their furniture. You can see her on the very right in the cabinet, back in the cabinets. Got the furniture arranged with the chairs up. Um, this is another classroom. Uh, this teacher's got their te uh, uh, desk arranged in a U shape, and you, there you can see they've got quite a few boxes there, having come over from Yanny Yates that they're in the process of unpacking, and then they're there again as the, the large monitor at the center of the space. Um, but the, the uh, K through 8 school's got these two great grand staircases with windows that overlook the field. These are what most of the students will go up and down, and they're really, they really turned out quite nicely. Down on the first floor is the uh, uh, kindergarten first and a couple second grade rooms. That's actually Rez Von Jordery from the architect, uh, back checking punch list work. Um, this is the corridor for the on the first floor. Uh, this is one of the classrooms in progress. You can see the items moved over from Annie Yates that are being going to be unpacked this week. Um, you'll also see there's a, there's a color theme, their theme. The top floor is blue, middle floor is green, and this is yellow. That's what that, you can see some of the color highlights there. This is, this is one of the, I think, the kindergarten rooms. So the teacher was in there arranging their furniture today and unpacking their boxes. Um, the multi-purpose room, this is a large multi-purpose room. You can see all the, caf the cafeteria tables there. That large, um, at the top, you can see where the partition is. So there's a curtain that blocks off. The, there's a partition that covers the, the, that stage area. That's the music room. And then for performances, it can be opened up and that acts as a stage. And there's another one at the top that goes perpendicular. That's what divides this room into two halves. What you see on the floor there is temporary protection. We just put that down as we moved in so we wouldn't ding up the floor. We're pulling that up now. At the kitchen, this is the servery um, that you can see the refrigerators behind there. And this is where the students will line up and, and serve. There's two, two, two um, versions of this. Um, this is the kitchen equipment. Again, the health inspector was doing their inspection as, as, a, as I walked through the space today at about 3.30. Um, then at the field, site work. So site work is really what the, the remaining work to do underway. I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, this is from the field looking towards the K-8 through school. Uh, these are all of our plants. Most of the activity right now, there's still some concrete work. Most of it's planting. And this is, they've kind of, they're a, a, kind of our nursery is along 53rd Street in the sidewalk. 
um, the, uh, they're uh, mounding all the mounds and getting ready for topsoil. And then in the next several days, they'll be, next few days, they'll be planting the plants. The irrigation systems are in place underneath that dirt. Um, this is all, and then this is the community commons. And that is the, what you see the dirt there is the turf area. They'll put topsoil in tomorrow, and then they're putting sod down there. And those concrete seat walls are the seat walls. I'm actually standing on the stage right now. And those boomerang seat walls are what you'll be sitting on if you, as you look towards the stage. On the left-hand side, you'll see that area there. That's where the wall hollow will be installed. Remember, we added the wall hollow later in the project. That's going to go in in October. But this is the community commons. And then there's two, uh, uh, two laborers there. They're getting ready for the trees to be planted in the tree wells in that space. This is along 53rd. This, again, is the Emeryville Green Corridor that is compliant with the, the general plan. That's why it's this wide area. We've got landscape boulders, trees, and shrubs going in, and then the architectural sandblasted concrete. Um, they're just about done with this. We are, we're still doing some work in this area, but it looks really quite nice. Um, and then here we're plant, planting trees along, four, uh, along 47th. You see the trees all staged there, and then to the right is where those will be going. The field. The field uh, looks, looks terrific. Um, you can see the, all the lines there are laid out for football, soccer, baseball, softball, and then the track that goes around it. Um, this is another view from the top of the third floor of Building C. Um, they, you'll see there's still some of the, the natural cork there. This picture was taken a couple days ago. They've now really got that really um, spread throughout. Um, you'll see right here, um, the, there's the dugouts for baseball and softball. And that is our maintenance machine. This is the little machine that is used to maintain that field and make sure that the infill is, is, is maintained and it sort of fluffs it up periodically so that it maintains a loose, a loose fill within, within the turf. And you can see the dugout there that that ladder is up against. And in the background, you can see the sound wall that is required in the environmental document to provide sound mitigation to Emory Bay Village. And the pool, the pool has been, uh, had quite a bit of use all summer long since it opened in May. Um, uh, it's really, uh, from what we've heard, it's been quite, quite, quite popular. I can't recall the exact date. Uh, May 19th is when we had sign-offs from the, from the, from the inspectors. Um, in terms of change order review and negotiation, here, I've got an update here. Uh, remember, our process is that Turner submits notice of change for scope approval. Um, work must proceed before cost negotiated. Um, Turner then submits a change order request for review and approval. Our estimators perform a detailed review, material quantities, unit costs, labor materials, and also we look for cost savings opportunities. And this is where we review things. A lot of times we will suggest other uh, materials or methods that will, that where we can reduce the cost of, of change orders as they come up. We then respond with a detailed review, and then we meet to negotiate and finalize. And the, the tally as of, the, uh, as of today, um, and this includes the, this includes the, the pool, um, uh, the, the pool that was, which was added. To date, the original submit is just a, uh, about 7.9 million. The approved amount for those submitted is about 6.9. So negotiated savings to date, about 1.1 through that process of reviewing and negotiating those change orders. Um, here's an example. So this is what Turner would submit, something that adds up to 33,000. This is our review showing where we disagree with it. In this case, it was 26,000. For this particular one, we, we, we negotiated this for about 29,500 from the original price of 33. So we do, we do this review for each one of those. Um, as of 731, so you've seen this before, these are our, our four categories of, uh, for change orders other than owner-generated ones, like the pool. Um, and the top percentages are what we forecast um, at, the at the beginning job for this type of job. And you can see where we've come in. We're right about where we would have projected for, two for unforeseen conditions, right at just a, a tad over for permit agency requirements. We are a bit over for architect and engineer errors and omissions, and right about on, on what we would have projected for contractors' contingency. Um, again, the, the news here is that the contingency budget in the, in the budget approved two years ago has been used for these sorts of things. The additional bond funds, which the board approved, have been used for added scope such as so, that benefit the district and the city, such as the swimming pool, technology upgrades, funding for furniture. So we've not had to use those added bond dollars for any of these sorts of things, which don't really add value to the project. These we've we, these we've been used the contingency for these items, and and we've 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 just about hit that contingency and haven't had to use bond, additional bond dollars for these sorts of things. Um, in terms of project completion, again, the, the definition of substantial completion is buildings completed for intended use 
as determined by the DSA inspectors and the architect. And again, our contract completion date has, has been July 25th for the last few months. These are the substantial completion dates that were certified by the architect. Um, buildings A through D this week. Building E was May 19th. Um, I want to point out that you'll see that we did not hit the 725 date. The main issue here had to do with site concrete. Uh, we had design issues, a few unforeseen conditions um, with the civil engineering drawings. Since we couldn't get the sidewalks done, the elevator inspectors would not inspect. Um, we did get those finally done. We've had those inspections, and now we've been cleared for occupancy um, for all buildings. Um, Turner's or contra requirements, I want to point out that there is a clause for liquidated damages of $5,000 per workday that they don't meet that 725 date. We've notified them in writing that they are at risk for that. Uh, they, they are welcome to submit um, a rationale for why, that, uh, why, they, why it would may be legitimate to extend that date, um, but that we have not yet received that. Um, I also want to point out that we have not approved one dollar in change orders for added schedule time for Turner. I don't anticipate approving one dollar of change orders for Turner for added schedule on this project. Final completion, the contract date is September 1st, which is a couple weeks, of course. That includes operation and maintenance documents, which we're in the process of collecting. Those are all the manuals for staff uh, to maintain the building. Um, final sign-off of permitting agencies, such as the health inspector, like we had today. There's a few final sign-offs. Um, completion of punch list items, that'll be off hours work. Anything we don't complete by the 25th will be off hours after school, e after school until 8 o'clock at night. I don't anticipate a lot of that. It just depends on when those subcontractors are available to do that work on Saturdays. And also final completion is the start of the two-year warranty period. That warranty period does not start until we certify that they're finally complete. So um, the, the pressure on Turner is that they want to make that warranty period start as soon as possible. But it, it's not going to happen until all these things are complete. Um, you know, the focus now is going to shift to move to operations and maintenance. Um, building systems commissioning has been underway for about a month now, and startup um, systems training of district and city staff is underway. Um, there are monthly programming meetings uh, that are uh, scheduled by Pedro that how the city and district share the schedule of the meeting. We've been doing that for this year for the gym. Now we're doing it, we're doing it for the, the project as a whole. Um, there's monthly operations and maintenance buildings of, 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 both, of both district and city staff on terms of scheduling maintenance. Um, which is obviously going to become uh, 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 much more active now that the project will be will occupied and complete. Again, the warranty period is two years. Um, there is a process for warranty items where Turner is notified and they have a um, time period with, within which to do that. Um, and then the other thing that we've done is we've drafted up a uh, draft RFP for a power purchase agreement at the request of the Citizens Oversight Committee. This is purchasing green power, basically entering into an agreement with a provider who would put solar panels on the roofs. These buildings are what are called PV ready, so we can basically plug in solar, assist, solar panels. Um, I gave a presentation to the, to the board, I think about two months ago, on how these work and what they entail. But we have uh, um, uh, we've, we've are, are the, have drafted up that, and I'll discuss that more in detail at, the, at an upcoming board meeting. Um, and that is our, uh, the report on ECCL for this city schools meeting. Um, in terms of, I know you were talking about the, the punch list and the items that were included on the punch list. Um, just in terms of the safety, that means that there will be no hard hat. Materials. No, there's no. In fact, there's, we have no, as of today, we have no hard hat requirements unless they were they're doing landscaping work and they've roped it off. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I admonish them because they've not really roped off those areas and teachers are walking around while they're doing shoveling dirt and putting trees in right now. So they've got to rope those areas off, but there's no hard hats required on the site now. Okay. Um, and when we do punch list work, that won't be the case also. But if they've got to do work in a certain area, they've got to rope it up with caution tape and work only within air, that area. So one of the things we'll need to work closely with the city and district is when we do, after, after 3.30, you know, we'll probably have, a, it'll be, there's a lot of like painting. Um, there's some, there'll be some mechanical plumbing work to sort of, if there are devices that don't work, that are not, are not functioning properly, some of that stuff. But we'll have to work, we're gonna work where, where there's no one occupying. Obviously, if there's an after school program, we're not gonna work in that classroom and do painting there. Most of this work is gonna be done over the first couple weeks of September. 
it'll tail off after that. We only went to the city with a longer period in case we have some, some units got to be replaced that has a long lead time. Like let's say that we have a fan that's not working. Mm -hmm. We may do install that in a Saturday in October or something like that if it takes four weeks to get that replacement part. But we don't anticipate, we anticipate 90% of the punch list work being picked up by the first day of school. And then over the next two weeks, the, the majority of that taking place. And then I was looking at the diagram that you had given us um, in terms of the field and the track. Um, I didn't see any bleachers present. Um, if you can just tell me the... Yeah, there's place. actually some equipment that's actually has not been installed at the field. And that is there are football goal posts which roll off the site. I think those are... Some of that has arrived and is stored behind the gym. And I, I, I'm not sure if we've got all of it yet. There's also soccer goals. And then bleachers, and the bleachers, because of the multi, you know, the, the um, field's got a multi-use, they can move. So it's not, there's nothing permanent on that field. They're rolling, the bleachers and football goal posts and soccer goal posts all move around on wheels so they can be reconfigured depending on which sport is taking place. Excellent. But then we have two sets of bleachers, two football goals, two soccer goals, and I, I paid I forget, we have some other stuff I think as well. Um, I can't recall all, the, all that stuff. Right, batting cages, that's the other one, right? Oh, the play structure um, for the elementary kids has that been in place? That gets that gets installed next week. That's, that's all that that level that um, that takes about a day to install that level uh, that's been leveled off where that goes and that gets that that will go in next week. So it has been received. I'm sorry, just to clarify, are you referring to the, the K, the small kindergarten play structure yeah, on 53rd? Yeah. Okay, just not the wall hall. No, the wall hall right. will follow no. in October because we that was a oh. thing we added late in the project. Oh yeah, that's what the I was play saying. structure, which is for the um, really the K through eight school, which is right on the entry, that gets installed next week. Okay, so they will have something to use during the beginning of school. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Okay. It looks wonderful so far. I'm sorry. Can you clarify which play structure that is? Yes, there's a small play structure. Right uh, at the top of the A, right at the top, you can kind of right, see it there, right the above the A. One. That's the pre-K, kindergarten so play structure. So the elementary school age kids will not have a new play structure? They will no. have a new play structure. Yes, the, the, the elementary school... On the start of school, no. they won't have a, they won't have a play structure. structure. Let's not... No, the, the, um, the wall hall, the, there's a play structure, the, the elementary school I, I, kids, okay. there's a play structure that is, you can see it. That will go in next week. The Walhalla, which is an added play structure, which is not designated, that was added to the project. That had been value engineered out quite a while ago, and the board added that back in this past summer. It's made in the Netherlands and is on its way, and that, that, there, there's, that, is, that was always going to be installed in October. Um, but the play structure for the main play structure, which you see here, which is for the K-8 school, will be, will be in place, is installed next week. When will the sod in the play area for the K-8 school be able to be used? Because if they're laying it tomorrow, doesn't it have to sit for a week or something? I don't think so, actually. Um, I'd have to check and see how, what, the, what, the, what the timeline is for that. They're putting topsoil, they're, I, they're putting topsoil tomorrow. They may even install on the sod tomorrow. Uh, I know the topsoil goes in tomorrow. But I can certainly find that out and, and, and let you know. <coughs> And then can you talk about the cement that still needs to be laid and how that, I'm cu curious how we have, cement doesn't seem to me to be like a small item. So how can we have reached substantial completion today and there's still cement to be laid? Because all of the code required egress and access paths, those are complete. So the concrete work we still have underway, which is just a little bit, there's a little bit in the parking lot and, a, and, there, and, the, and at, the, at the entry of the library. We have code required, our code required paths are complete. That's how we got signed off. The, what's remaining is not required egress or, or exiting paths, so it's not required for occupancy. And so for Monday, will there be parking? Yeah, so they're, they're, paving, they're paving along 47th today, mm -hmm. and then they're going to be, they're finishing up now, and they're going to be striping tomorrow. They're striping all of 47th, and the lot, the parking lot, gets striped tomorrow. And then we've got signage going in that, that designates that for teacher and staff parking. Parking lot, a part of 47th Street. Yes, the parking lot comes. The parking lot comes off of 47th. You can see it right there, 
And it's, it's the parking lot, the internal lot, which I think is about 30 spaces, is really meant for for uh, for teachers and staff. Um, but there's also there, there's the transportation management plan and the parking management plan designates. I forget the number of spaces, but parking all along that whole all along 47th here it, and that lot are all for for the ECCL project. And um, I'm not I don't know exactly which spaces are reserved for which people, but we can certainly, I can find that information out. But really all of 47th down to about where the entry to AC Transit is, and then that internal lot is designated for ECCL. Traditionally, a lot of AC Transit people park in those spots. Correct, but the environmental document, as, which, which was reviewed and accepted by um, the city, by city planning, uh, has designated that parking for ECCL. I'm not, I, it predates me in terms of what discussions or input AC Transit had on that, but there will be signage like there is at Annie Yates restricting that parking for use of ECCL. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Baker. Members of the public, questions? So I looked at, the, I went to the site today, and I'm in the business. I build, I'm a <clears throat> builder, and I, there, there's no way this is going to be finished in the timeline that Mr. Baker is just relaying here. Now, if you listen closely to what he said, it's, it's, all, it's virtually complete, 95 complete. Of course, what he's not telling us is when it actually will be complete, and I'm telling you that it's it's going to be completed, largely completed in, in uh, December, probably late December. <clears throat> it'll tr dribble on for a couple months after December, but I mean, it'll be major impacts to the students all the way to December. Major impacts. The project is more than a year late as of right now. It was supposed, we were told by Mr. Uh, Rubio that the FFEs take a, take a month. And so this, this project was supposed to be finished a month before school starts last year. Here we are at school starting next week. Uh, there's a huge amount of work to be done. Pouring concrete, as he sort of reluctantly admitted. There's a, there's a large amount of concrete, a huge amount. Our children are going to be going to school in a construction zone the entire first semester. Uh, Who's going to take the blame for that? I mean, it's more, it's over budget. And uh, yes, the project is over budget. He's scowling. Uh, and over a year late, Turner's not going to accept fault. The school board won't accept fault. The school district won't accept fault. No, there'll be no one's fault except somebody's going to pay. And who's that? Oh, the children will pay because they're going to, they're going to be going to school in a substandard school for their whole first semester at this site. And so, you know, a pretty rosy picture was just painted by this guy that we paid $1.2 million, million to, that has done nothing but paint rosy pictures about this and served as a, not as a objective construction analyst, analyst uh, in my opinion. Instead, he's been a, sort of a, you know, in, the, in Turner's, working for Turner Construction. Uh, and I'm not the only one that thinks that. There's a lot of parents that think that and, and uh, residents. And uh, so, I, you know, I'm kind of, I think we should be, expect more, and I don't think we should be so, uh, you, know, you know, just accept, willing to accept uh, what's being, we're, what's being, we're being told we must accept right now. I think it's, it's outrageous, and okay. uh, you know, the children are the ones who pay the price. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else from the public? Okay, 5.3, Emeryville Center for Community Life uh, ribbon cutting ceremony discussion. Just wanted to remind everyone that uh, the ribbon cutting schedule for September 1st at 10 a.m. Um, if you haven't already done so, please RSVP with Cindy to let her know that you'll be attending. 
Um, we will have parking and shuttle from uh, City Hall on that day um, available. Um, we do have uh, dignitaries coming on that day, um, scheduled to, a couple of them scheduled to speak, and then um, we, we're working on the program currently to finalize uh, who will be um, on there and, and when they'll be talking. There, we have some members of the community coming that Carolyn's going to share. Uh, well, essentially, uh, I understand that we've gotten some, um, RSVP back from Barbara Lee, uh, Nancy Skinner will be in attendance, a uh, representative from Tony Thurman's office, representative from Keith Carson's office. Um, who did we miss? Um, then we would have, of course, um, uh, former uh, school board members, former council members, uh, former school faculty, will be present, and uh, students and alumni. Did that include former superintendent? Mm. I would think so. Can, can Tony Smith make it? Oh. No. Oh. We, we have, we gave him, uh, we had some communication with uh, Tony Smith last fall, hoping he could, but he recently told us he was not able to come. Um, then the idea would be that this would be held in Building A, the community center, and um, if there are uh, other uh, particular dignitaries that we are aware of, uh, who would be attending? Keith uh, Carson. Uh, Keith is Carson is where we have a, just a representative coming. So uh, obviously, if there were other dignitaries that would be coming, we'd like to know, and or Karen their representatives. Monroe. I didn't. Can Can you tell me who that? She's the county superintendent. Oh, she's yes. I don't know if we have an RSVP. Okay. <coughs> so let me check though. Karen Munro. Yeah. County superintendent. Yes. Um, I'll check in and see. In some cases, we may. Uh, proactively make a phone call and ask them if I'd also uh, see that Sheila Jordan would be invited and she's uh, Karen's uh, predecessor mm -hmm. okay we'll check in with those folks and um, I know that we will be uh, offering a small tour there is school in session and so Cindy was going to uh, lead a small tour. I think uh, that would probably be more for folks who are not local uh, because we'd want to keep the group small for less disruption uh, of the students. And um, the uh, Master of Ceremony would be Diane Martinez, Mayor. Uh, she does have some experience in this area and we are also uh, of course working on the video is uh, that a separate uh, let, me, let me interrupt mm -hmm. you there this is a joint venture between mm -hmm. the school and the city and why wouldn't uh, the the person leading the event uh, be jointly the, the mayor and the president of the school board I think it's extraordinarily important mm -hmm. to maintain that visibility of the connection between the school and the city mm -hmm. and to have just the mayor alone surely there could be a joint way of presenting this I'm sure uh, so I, I, I feel very John F. About felt this. this is a yeah, joint I, project I agree also sure so if they split up the program and do okay the first half however the they do it but, but joint opening keep comment. in mind we'll talk to uh, yeah. John F. felt and see what he would how he'd like to work that in. Okay. And uh, so if oh, there. Oh, did you send a letter to Barack to <laughs> invite him? I'm not kidding. No, really. You never know. Serendipity is always at work. Invoy invite him. I kind of thought we did oh. with Michelle. I, I, we may have. I'm not sure. I have to, I, I have to go back and look at the community. Yeah. I'm not sure. So. Let's do it. Yeah. If you can't come, I'll send a letter. You never know where lightning That's right. strikes. That's okay. right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, there you 
but if there are any other uh, dignitaries who uh, would like to speak, then um, then uh, we Martin should contact. Well, he should be invited, so he knows that it's happening. Secretary of Education should be invited. Oh. I think we had this in the list that you guys updated. When good, we good, 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 good. But uh, even though not all of the dignitaries will speak, um, they will. The ones who are not speaking will be introduced. They can send a telegram at the beginning. Congratulations. Well, those present will be introduced so that they can Res be recognized. We'll, we'll read any and all resolutions, <laughs> resolutions <laughs> or proclamations. Oh no 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 no. We'll just indicate that they communicated with us. Or we'll put them Enough on display, already, maybe. The yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are there any other um, suggestions or? So if we can possibly have some students involved in the program, um, at least the ASB members, um, just in terms, I know they'll be in class, but it's definitely good to have that student representation visible. We do, we have some, we, we, have, we have some students who are gonna be involved. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So one of the part on that one is that we'll have a community open house on Friday, uh, September 2nd from 4 to 6 for the whole public and that'll be where they'll be able to walk around and we'll give tours and, and we'll um, have bring refreshments at both events. At both events we'll have refreshments. We, it's important to the Emeryville citizens. <laughs> and for the uh, ribbon cutting, the recreation staff will be there to help guide the parking on 53rd. Um, Yes, we're, we'll confirm that. I think one of the sides would have some reserved parking for some of the dignitaries, um, and then the rest of them will be parking at City Hall and, and shuttling in on uh, our, our bus that we have. Right. What's your committee comment or public comment before you do your discussion? Pardon me, Chair. This is an information This is out item. of order. Can we, can we, if people speak, they have to be recognized by the Chair. Yeah, and this, uh, Get a this little is an information chair. item. And the public can ask questions after we've done asking our questions here. Any other questions about the ribbon cutting? Or about the following day, the no, community? I, I, just, uh, I just think you have a couple people you may want to invite. Uh, any class representatives for class of 2014, 2015, and 2016 of Emory Secondary? Uh, like president, uh, you know, student council <coughs> presidents or something of that nature to give recognition to their sacrifice for the time that they were away from this facility. What about class of 2010? No, I'm just <laughs> Don't forget about us. We're not that old yet. No. <laughs> Dr. Rubio, are you providing release time for the president of the teachers union and or the president of the CSEA? Uh, we're going to arrange for both of them to someone take their class so they can come out. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Questions about this from the public? Good evening, Brenda Collins. Um, I would just like to urge Dr. Rubio to try to think and consider about making something inclusive of the students for that day, something a little celebratory. Maybe, I mean, they should be able to participate a little, the halls decorated letting them know it's about the building that they're occupying. Because it looks like it's becoming way more political than it is student oriented. So maybe incorporating lessons throughout the day about the groundbreaking and the history and having a celebration at lunch or something. But I think, and I would like to ask you to please include the students. First of all, the way you're supposed to run meetings is you have the decision makers are able to ask clarifying questions, then you go to the public, then you have your substantive discussions, then you make your decision. Doesn't matter if it's for in, in, uh, informational. You'll note many positions were hardened just now about how to do this item uh, before the public was allowed to speak. So that's the way you should run meetings. 
presentation, clarifying questions from the decision makers, open to the public, then discussion of, subse of subsequence by the decision makers, and, th and then you make your decision. That's how you do it, even if it's informational. Now, regarding dignitaries, I think it's very fitting that you're trying to get Tony Smith here, former <coughs> superintendent. Um, although, if he says yes, you might want to step up the police presence because he's an extremely unpopular man in Oakland. Uh, he pissed off huge numbers of Oakland parents by his privatization concepts about how to run public schools, the idea. He's a privatizer. He's right in there with Arnie Duncan, secretary of, this, uh, of the uh, education. Uh, it's all about shut, cut, shut, cut, and charter. So you shut schools, cut school programming, and charter, and then open charter schools. So that's Tony Smith's vision, and that vision has been adopted by the uh, school district here. It's all about privatization, really heavy on the administration and really heavy on consultants and looking at schools as really real estate deals. A building of schools is essentially real estate, not, it's not about children's pr uh, programming and what have you. So it would be apropos to get Tony Smith because his vision is still being uh, celebrated here, the, the vision of privatizing public education and the vision of cut, shut, and charter. But, I've, but I'm warning you, you should get police. Get, make sure you have a, plenty of cops because there'll be a lot of angry protesters here if you get Tony Smith. In addition, as I said earlier, why aren't you getting uh, former su uh, superintendent De uh, Deborah Lindo? You're talking about superintendents and somehow she's being skipped. Why, how come she's not going to be invited? Uh, and then also when we're talking about ribbon cutting, I, I think we, this would be a good opportunity to tell the, the, the community. Is that my time? Yeah, Thank you very much. Anybody else? Five point five. Five point four. Five point four. Lobby monitor dedication content. So in your packet, so you have in front of you uh, presented what the um, mayor uh, Diane Martinez has been working on, uh, and I believe someone else was also working on it. In the car right now uh, has a history presentation of the information that we're looking to uh, this display the in the document? monitor. Yes, it's two pages, two sided. <coughs> Mr. Chair, we no longer have a quorum. We we'll have two school board members. I mean, two, two right. city council members. So we'll have to. It won't help. It won't help. Yeah, there's no point waiting for Asher or, or Martinez. So. Yeah, it looks like we're done. We're, we're done. done. We cannot do that. The meeting's over, the Brian. The meeting's over. over. I don't think she realized that. Yes, she did. Well, we had five more this minutes. This is my baby, though. Uh, no, because it's the lack of quorum. Meeting is adjourned.